folks once again full day of advising ahead of me and so here we go with another round of sherlock holmes chapter one and i load into a new fast travel point all right now oh wait, what am i wearing oh right i did that um all right so if i remember correctly when we left off a mother's love was stalled uh, possibly because there's more to do at Stonewood Manor that I did not encounter before. We do, however, have a, another Moriarty. And we also have the Kali Shangles case. How far away is this? It's an old city. It's quite a ways away. We have no fast travel points there. That's our closest one. Well, let's, let's at least mark it on the map, eh? Um, Gold Eel Bar, corner of Scarlet, oh, on Scarlet Street, on Scarlet Street, west of Sesame. Um, Sesame, Scarlet, west, oh, here's Scarlet Street right here, so it's right about here. This is, um this. Eh, it's right near another coin, too. Um, I would also like a little bit of action in this game. We kind of haven't had any since our police training, so maybe we should clear out the bandit lair and give that a try. See what it do. Um, yes, let's let's do that. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. Got changed my brawling clothes. Let's see what we got. Um, let's dress shabby for this, yeah. I don't. I'm, I'm just assuming. I guess the bandits are shabby, shabby folk. Um, that says. It's as shabby as I can be, sadly. An old old man with an injured eye. All right, we go, and we go, and we go. What's, uh, what's people's reaction? Can you satisfy my curiosity? What are you trying to sniff around for? Oh, wait, I should probably... Is there a... There is no, there's nothing to pin for this. I know nothing. Trying to keep in mind this pinning mechanism. It's been quite uh, vexatious for me to this point. Um, you know, I kind of believe that you should automatically pin whatever your current objective happens to be, or uh, heaven forbid, even automatically pin. Oh, there's the mandolier. Even automatically pin your closest objective, or just do away with the pinning thing altogether and just have the quests in the open world be an open world quest. I understand why they did it. It's just, like I said, for some reason I have issues with her calling. Um, we got some cards here, some beer. Alright. Um, Bandit Lair Scaladio. Activate challenges for a higher reward multiplier. Arrest everyone in Silverton Lair to unlock. Arrest everyone. Okay. I guess we'll do it and see what happened. Oh, goodness. I got my gun out. I'm coming for you. Now, there is an objective to kill a bunch of people, but I recall that's not necessarily what we're after here. Oh, shit. Oh goodness, this is far more dangerous than the training. <laughs> I'm coming for you. Arrested, Don't fool. Whoa shit. You've lost. Damn it. Oh, you okay. killed him. Yeah, I sure did. I'll put you six feet under. Oh, uh ha <laughs> ha yes. There is an achievement no to kill more. people. The snuff's ready. Uh, 
and there's an achievement to kill, so if I do end up doing that, I'm not that put off by it. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Oh, good god, what the fuck? Sniper with that thing. Well, that was right in the head, wasn't it? For a lot of these guys. No, you killed him. Okay. Apparently, it's quite easy to kill them. Eat ah, come on. And I'm dead. <clears throat> okay. It did not go exactly according to plan, but that was my first real attempt at one of these. So I almost feel like is this even worth any of this trouble? I wonder. I suppose we have to do one to find out, don't we? Matter of fact, simply killing them might be the better way to go under the circumstances. I'm coming for you. Ow! Take a rest, my friend. I have no good options there. Damn, and they are fucking accurate with these. Goddamn period weapons. Don't bother moving. You've lost. How do you do? Take a rest, my friend. Oh, that's right. There's no the snuff's coming. ready. Snuff is ready. Okay, we'll see if we can group them up then. This is the guy with the armor, so we definitely aren't going to be snuffing him. Fucking reload. Don't give him the pepper snuff. I am invincible. Oh right, he's armored. Shit. Fuck move, dude. God damn. I'll put you so I couldn't miss the party. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Oh, you killed him! Yeah, fuck it. Honestly. Do not care. Hey, you could have kept him alive. No. I could. Didn't. Decided not to. That damn bottles. Move! Ah. He, he fucking stun locked. Okay. Get I couldn't miss the party. Take a rest, my friend. Ah, another armor, dude. Ah, fuck. Reload. Shit. The snuff's ready. Snuff doing no good. Fuck it. Die. Or not. All oh, right, armor. Goddamn armor. Time to knock this guy out. And I'm too far away for the snuff. Marvelous. No more crime for you until next month. What an unpleasant challenge. Okay. Oh shit, there's more. Oh. And armored, of course he is. Damn it. Okay. It's all yours. Go for it. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Oh, you killed him! Yeah, that was not unintentional, John. Hey, you could have kept him alive. Well, 
I was aiming for the mask on that one, but that's fine. Good God, that is an unpleasant challenge. Okay, so... Rank 1 Gentle Threat. Okay. Location difficulty bonus, I don't know if that's a lot or a little. Damage received, you get a bonus for receiving damage. Shots fired, 48. I'm assuming you get a bonus for fewer shots fired. Okay. Whatever, man, I'll take it. That was not fun. Um, mostly, I mean, not that I'm like opposed to challenges like that, right? I mean, it's fine. Well, now we got some guys just appeared out of thin air. Um, the problem is that this game is not built for that kind of gameplay. Like, the mo moving... He disappeared. Um, moving Sherlock is... I mean, he is not nimble. And, uh... Anyway. This, is just, this just isn't... And they keep appearing out of thin air. This just isn't that kind of game. So, um... That was an un unpleasant experience, but I'm not going to complain that much. It's fine. Oh, and it moved my... Why would you move my thing? Wait. Now it's no longer... What? Oh, do I have to have it... Do I have to have it pinned? No, it is pinned. remove the compass mark. Can I only have one mark? Where'd it go? Scarlet. Oh, now it's back. Okay. Hmm. Weird. Alright, so do we head back to Stonebrook and see if there's something we missed there, or do we try... We do a side quest. I think let's do a side quest. Let's try the uh, Kali Shingles. It's going to be a little bit of a walk, though. Yes, of Cordona. The treasures await you. Okay, let's put our... Let's do this. Yes, the Widower. There's so many things happening. There's people around. If it if it weren't for the sound, the empty the emptiness of the city would uh, uh, it would be much not, not less apparent, but um, it would seem much more lively if it weren't so quiet. I can hear the ocean. Hey, I'm gonna talk to this lady. Hey there. Could you help me? I have nothing to tell you. Sorry. Just wanted to see how they react to the outfit. Apparently it's based mostly on what you have pinned rather than how you look. <clears throat> Gatehouse Bridge. Old City. Old City appears to be the predominantly Ottoman part of the city. There, dude. London route. I don't want to go on. So. I've decided I'm gonna play the Frogware Sherlock Holmes Holmes series in chronological order. So, in terms of uh, Sherlock's journey, this is the first. This is actually the most recent game, as it, as it turns out. But this is the. Okay. Apparently, I have to take. Hermes to get through a gate. And so I shall. Um, anyway, um, this is the most recent Frogwares Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes, sorry. Sherlock Holmes game. But chronologically, it is the first. This is when Sherlock is roughly. Oh, fall damage? No. Um, Sherlock is roughly 21 or so. Am I going the right way? I am not. Um, the next one would be, and this is like 
1879 or so is this? Yes, this is her um, 1879 or so, about 10 years after his mother's death, which was in 1869. And the next one, chronologically, would be um, Sherlock versus Jack the Ripper, which of course takes place in 1888. So that will be the next one I run through after the, the main story here. Or, I guess, when I get tired of this, whichever happens first. Actually, we're closest to the Moriarty one, so that's where I'm going to go. Out of lunchtime. A goat! Mr. Holmes, your brother sent me. How did you know it was me? Let me guess. A mission of global importance in right. nation. So M must be Mycroft. <laughs> Let's get this over with. I guess it could still be Moriarty because the I see the, seems to be the antagonist genetic. on these missions. Well then, this island is home to a seemingly innocuous astronomy professor named Jacob Haring. In high society, though, he's rather more infamous. He possesses a collection of scandalous materials that could compromise almost every aristocrat in Britain. And Haring recently got his hands on information that would expose one of our men. He agreed to return it, so long as he was paid a visit by a Holmes. And Mycroft was too busy watching the crown jewels? Fine. I'll visit Mr. Haring the moment I can spare the time. Just wait. The man is a loner but a cunning one. This invitation implies he has something in mind for you. So be careful. And remember, I was never here. Jacob loves his secrets. Well, don't we all? Don't we all? Oh. Um, John, there's... There's no hopscotch. What are you doing? There's nothing there. You're never too old to play hopscotch. But are you brave enough to play our hard version on the stairs of the watchtower? That sounds ridiculously dangerous. All right. Um, clockwork extortion. Micro test me the retrieval of compromising information. He lives in a large mansion with a fountain near the east end of Bonanza Road in Grand Surrey. Okay, so we won't be doing that right now. Because that's way on the other side of the city. That's way over here. So we're going to proceed with the comedy shangles. Okay. Up here, is it? It's like a labyrinth. What old cities tend to be. Lives built upon lives built upon lives. Ah, here it is. The Golden Eel. Alright, before we head in there, let's review the evidence. Okay. A sailor was stabbed to death in a fight at the Golden Eel Bar, which is located on Scarlet Street in the old city west of Sesame. Suspects, Brian McLee. There's, there's a soldier. Alex Kaplan, Kaplanidis, Ke yeah, Kaplanidis, dock worker, and Selim Yunan, a trader. Suspects were detained. Cases pending further investigation. Soldier McLee, trader punched me in the face and broke my glasses. It was my only pair. The Ottoman scum hate all of us. How long do we have to put up with them? The worker. The worker is there's oh the dock worker. All right, so. Caplanidus. I was just sitting there minding my own business when the traitor hit the soldier and he crashed into my table. How could I stay calm? So I might have grabbed a bottle and smashed it over the traitor's head. I don't remember anything after that. The traitor. Selim Yunan. That sailor started pushing me around. Although I didn't mean to spill my drink on him, I fell on the soldier who lashed out at me like it was my fault. Traitor punched me in the face. Traitor hit the soldier. He says that the soldier hit him first. I had to stand up for myself, but then someone smashed me with a bottle and I blacked out. He says that he smashed... Yep, he did smash a bottle over the traitor's head. 
The barman. The trader spilled his beer on the sailor, and boy, that escalated quickly. Is the sailor supposed to be the soldier? Where is what is the sailor? I remember how the sailor swung a chair at the trader, but missed and hit the worker instead. He didn't see anything else. Or I didn't see anything else. I was hiding behind the counter, wait out the mayhem. Hit the worker instead, okay. Um, he's not dressed like a sailor. He is dressed like a soldier. No shirt, pants, cap, vest. Okay. Well. All right, then. Officer, are you working this? Stark told me you'd be doing the legwork for right. him. Feel free to look around. All right, then I shall. Who goes? Wow, things really got out of hand here. Hmm. Yeah, seems so. It's quite a bar fight. All right, I see evidence numbers. God, this is really quite a fight. Okay. Um. Oh, the sailor is the victim. That changes things. Um, the trader spilled his beer on the sailor. The sailor swung a chair at the trader, but missed and hit the worker. The trader hit the soldier. The soldier crashed into the table. He probably doesn't remember anything because he got hit by it. Or wait, did he hit him with the chair? Or did he miss? Uh, yeah, hit the worker. Okay. So, sailor. Trader spills beer on the sailor. Trader gets upset. Trader spilled his beer on the sailor. Sailor started pushing me around. I didn't mean to spill. Okay, so they were arguing. He spilled his drink on him. The... Sailor took offense, swung a chair, missed, hit the traitor, while the traitor got up and hit the soldier. All right, we need more information. This isn't adding up. Um, do I need do I need to pin a different thing in order to be able to analyze this or what? All right, let's just let's just do it without the fucking whatever first. Okay. There's a chair. That's probably supposed to be a spilled drink. Broken bottle. Table. I mean, there's broken bottles everywhere, though. Um, I have no idea what this is supposed to be. Is this supposed to be the table they were sitting at? Oh, uh, that's right. They crashed into the table. The soldier fell. There is a spilled drink. So what is that supposed to be? Blood? See what the barman could see. Assuming he was back here somewhere. Barman says Trader spilled his beer on the sailor. And then the sailor swung a chair but missed and hit the worker. So if that is indeed the spilled spilled drink there. And that is indeed the broken table. Worker was seated there. Soldier would have had to be. No, this is not adding up. Not what would you like? On today's menu, we have stomach punching, head kicking, and the chef's special throat slitting. I also have a dead bird. Yeah, this is not adding up. If this is indeed supposed to be, yeah, you know, it looks like that is supposed to be the blood. And I mean, there was a fight, so things are going to be moved around, I suppose. Long table in the center. Um, trade or worker over there. there. Must have been seated on this side of the long table. And then... Oh, yeah, this is a tangled web. Okay. Got anything back here? Just out of curiosity. No? Okay. 
Let's start with the, uh, the actual analysis here. If we, I mean, I know I could scan this, so I guess this is where we'll start. Shards of a broken bottle with blood on them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is the bottle that was used. Solid oak. It took quite a blow to break it. Well, yep. Enough to knock somebody out for sure. A knife. There's the murder weapon. Sharp enough to gut a fish or a man. An ordinary kitchen knife. That's a lot of blood. The victim was stabbed several times. Okay. And there's his glasses. The lenses are very thick. The owner of these glasses is very nearsighted. So we can't really trust anything he saw after his glasses were broken. Someone must have landed hard on it. Oops. <clears throat> okay. Spilled beer, let the spilled blood. An unfinished bottle of rum. Really interested in the dead bird. Where the fuck did that come from? All right. Just taking a second to think about this. We don't have anything in our notes. Um, I mean, a dock worker, the knife, they said the knife was sharp enough to gut a fish, but it was also an ordinary kitchen knife, so could be the dock worker, I guess. Um, he's the one most likely to carry a knife for utility purposes, I suppose. None of them are fishermen, so that, I'm just guessing, is a little bit of a red herring here. Um, 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 what does the soldier say? Uh, he doesn't even, his nearsightedness doesn't really seem to come into play. He doesn't say he saw anybody do anything. Um, the only other information there is that he's a little bit racist against the Ottomans, but that's, that's all right. <clears throat> all right. I was just sitting there minding my own business when the traitor hit the soldier and he crashed into my table. So the traitor was over there by that broken table where the glasses were found. That's where the worker was. He smashed it over the traitor's head. So he started pushing me around, although I didn't mean to spill my drink on him. But the traitor's... Yeah, okay. I fell on the soldier who lashed out at me like it was my fault. I had to stand up for myself. And he says he blacked out after being hit with a bottle. So... Both the worker and the traitor were said to be blacked out at the time of the murder. Meaning that there's only the soldier left. The soldier was the only one, according to their stories, who was conscious at the time. If that's true, there's no account here of the soldier and the sailor having any beef, but the soldier is very nearsighted. His glasses were broken. So he might have accidentally killed the sailor thinking he was someone else. 
So over there's the worker, sailor, trader. That's the bottle, so the worker, or the trader blacked out somewhere over there. The worker blacked out somewhere over there by the chair. The sailor's way over here. But for the soldier to knife the sailor would have had to get up and cross the room. Um, the worker smashed a bottle over the trader's head, so the trader is down. But the sailor then even though the traitor was downed by a bottle, still swung the chair at the traitor, but missed and hit the worker. If the traitor was already downed by a bottle, why would the worker, why would the sailor still be lashing out at him? That doesn't add up. I mean, it makes sense if the traitor and the worker are in a scuffle, and he's trying to bring the traitor down but misses, but, I mean, according to their stories... The trader is down already by a bottle, and then the sailor picks up a chair and tries to hit the trader, but hits the worker instead. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So, just to talk through kind of what I'm doing here, you know, what we're trying to do is we're, we're trying to meet the requirements of suspicion, which is um, motive, means, opportunity, and in the case of the trader and the worker, they don't have an opportunity because they say they were blacked out. And there's evidence that, you know, their stories may be true. There's a broken chair that would have required a lot of force to, to damage. And there's fragments of a bottle that, and there's blood, right? There's nothing that says that, you know, the bottle itself, that damage was enough to black out, but, you know, there's some evidence here to corroborate their stories. They're also very close to each other, right? So if you're looking in line, if the trader is here and the, he's scuffling with the worker, the worker's got a bottle, smashes it over his head, the worker would be here in this position, right? Fighting the trader. The sailor over here has a chair, smashes it over the worker's head. I don't know how he got the worker and trader confused, but whatever. Maybe they were drunk. Um, so then the sailor would be over here with the chair. Alright, so they don't have opportunity. They would be blacked out, and just for the sake of argument right now. The sailor, or the soldier rather, is over there who fell on the table and broke it, losing his glasses. Could have gotten up and charged the sailor. Yeah, that makes sense charged the sailor, they scuffled, he backed up a little bit, fell on the ground, and you know, the soldier did it. Okay. And he most likely did it because he could not tell who he was attacking because his glasses were broken. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see if we, we, we are anywhere even in the ballpark. Alright, so... Um, Who's, what's, who's this meant to be? Do we have to do these in order? Alright, that must be the sailor. Uh, yep. Uh, nope. Nope, sailor did not have the chair at that point. Uh, that is supposed to be... Um... The traitor is the one in the vest, yes. Push to the soldier. Nope. Bottle doesn't come into play. Yep, that's the soldier falling into the table. Here is... Yep, shirtless with your okay, cape, yep, guy with the bottle. Sailor with the chair. Nope. Not the traitor. Nope. Yes, soldier. 
Did not know who he was attacking, most likely. Okay. Does that look right? Altercation. Charges. Hits the soldier. Smashes it. Yep. I mean, uh, well, see, this isn't exactly right, because the, the bottle's actually over here. But I, I can't actually... These are predetermined things. So the bottle would actually be... This this would actually be over here, more where I had demonstrated before. So I think that this is correct, though, in, in the context of the game. It started when the trader accidentally spilled his beer over the sailor. The trader punched the soldier who came crashing down on a table. The worker smashed a bottle over the trader's head. Then the sailor knocked the worker out with a chair. The soldier is the real killer. He wanted to knife the trader but killed the sailor due to his poor eyesight. That's my theory. Is there more? What would you like? On today's okay. menu, we have stomach punching, head kicking, and the chef's special. Ah. Uh. Yes, that's my theory. What do we do with it? Oh, I probably have to take it back to the police, don't I? Um, okay. Yeah, I probably have to take it back to the police station. But in the meantime, we are very close to another coin. So let's do that. And we'll go this way. Because that's the way we're supposed to go. Probably in here. Ah, oh, there it is. Galenixel... Galenixel Cave, the Turkish coffee house, is the place to chat with people from different families and learn all the latest news. Everyone gathers here under the protection of the House of Eagle. Curiously enough, even though there is a certain understanding between the House of Eagle and the British military, the locals have a fail-safe system in place. Around the coffee house, you can see symbols which correlate with three phases of the moon, waxing, full, and waning. The locals all know a certain pattern that they can use to quickly disappear in the streets of the old city should the need to rise. Follow the natural cycles of the moon, starting from its youth, and so repeating, until you reach the mark upon the tree. There, between the roots, you'll find your coin. Um, pin. What in God's name is he talking about? I see. Symbols of the moon anywhere around here. Can you satisfy my curiosity? I have nothing to tell you. Sorry. Um. Oh, here we go. Mm. All right. Um. And there's another one. Okay. So we'll go here. Waxing full and waning. So to follow the phases of the moon, um, here's full. Kid, I was just standing here. You're the one who walked into me. Get out of here. Oh, that does make it a little bit easier to see the symbols, doesn't it? Okay. Is there one that I missed? Because I feel like the full moon is supposed to be the second one. Um. Ah. There we go. So that's meant to be uh, the waxing moon. Full moon. Uh, 
to... I'm missing nothing over here, however. So maybe it is meant to be the other way. I think maybe it's supposed to be the other way. Or maybe, uh, maybe I'm taking it too literally. Huh. Oh, uh, they are everywhere. Um, there's... Those are all blacks and moons. Holy moly, okay, we need a higher, higher advantage, higher advantage point. Say again. Um, you can see symbols as coins. There's no certain pattern that they can use to quickly disappear in the streets of the station. Yes. And so repeating until you reach the mark upon the tree. Just checking to see, like, is this supposed to be on the map? Is there a coffee house? Oh, that is what I—that is where I was at. Okay. Um. Okay. Maybe it would be easier to just try and find a tree, huh? I might be better off just trying to find a tree. Or was it the tree where I found... Okay, there's trees here. Was it the tree where this was? Is there a mark on this tree I didn't see? There's trees here. Oh, there's a tree here. No, it's not going to be that simple. There's nothing to figure out if that's the case. Okay. Um, so there is a full moon there, though. But it says in the in the order. So I'm guessing we're okay. I'm guessing we're supposed to follow these. This way is another of the three. Okay, there's another one there. Alright, so... And is this full? Yes, okay. So I think we're on the right track. So we're looking for either another full moon or a waning moon. Yes, a waning moon. So I got it. I think I got it anyway. That is a waxing moon, so no, we don't go that way. Instead we go... Okay, that's a full moon. That's the other... Oh, wait, that's the similar. That's a full moon. And, oh, there's trees here. That is a waning moon. So now we're looking for a waxing moon. Or is it one of these trees? Symbol on the tree. Yes. Oh! This is the park I was at before. Is it the goat? Does the goat have the coin? No. no full moon. Where am I, anyway? 
Oh, symbol on a tree. Oh, there it is. Okay, got it. A yellow boy or guinea. This coin was minted from the gold mined on the Guinea coast of Africa. It's considered a more gentlemanly currency than the pound. Hmm. Yeah, sounds gentlemanly. Rarity. Well, the people who mine that gold think so too. It must have been a late addition by Mycroft. Well, cool. Find another coin. Um, all right, to the police station. Is that this? No, that's the um, theater. Uh, there it is. Police station. <clears throat> uh, where am I? Okay, there we go. Stark the Clark, how you, you doing? three people detained on suspicion of murdering a sailor in a bar fight. All evidence indicates that the soldier among them is the true killer. He was the last man standing. Very well. Soldier or not, he'll get what he deserves. I'll see to it personally. Nice work. Try solving another case. It seems you have a knack for it. Is there another case up here? Oh, there it is. Splitting the loot. Um, three men were killed in a quarrel over the distribution of bank, rob bank robbery loot. The gunfight was reported at the northern end of Silverton in a backyard on Engineer's Lane between Ebernote Street and Coal Pit Street. The stolen property was not recovered. A case suspended due to inconclusive evidence pending further investigation. All right, uh, victim Roger Smiley, 42 years old, previously arrested for theft, was wearing glasses, cause of death, shotgun wounds to the torso. Bill Devon, 35, previously affiliated with the Red Scarves gang, cause of death, blood loss from a severed jugular vein. John Doe, around 30 years old, was wearing a hat, suffered a leg wound, cause of death, point blank, shot to the heart. Ooh, that is, uh, that is a sign of a double cross. Um, northern end of Silverton in a backyard on Engineer's Lane between Ebernote and Coal Pit. Silverton. Ebernote. Coal Pit. Engineer's Lane. So a backyard somewhere. Somewhere in here. Batteries dying on my headphones. There we go. Somewhere in there. That's a long ways away, though. I have not yet been to that particular particular burrow. Clockwork extortion. Mycroft tasked me with the retrieval of compromising information. Um, it was in a large mansion with a fountain uh, in Grand Saray at the end of Bonanza Road. Grand Saray. Bonanza Road. So, well, most likely this is the giant mansion. All right. Um, well, there's a fast travel station right there, so that's that's where we're headed next. Also put, oh, excuse me. Also puts us conveniently near a couple of other other objectives, like the furniture. Which actually, now that I think of it, maybe I need to replace the furniture before I can proceed with Stonebrook. So let's actually do that. We'll head west and look for a furniture cellar. Which should be pretty close by. I'm just cleaning trigger, but I need to save my money. To buy the furniture, you see. There we go. You'll never find such magnificent paintings and sorry, I have nothing to offer then you. What the present. fuck? Why does it say you do? Oh. Because this is not the right place. Getting off easy this time. Tired of your garden view? Visit my sh My goods will brighten up your house. Yeah, if you say so. Um, are either of these... 
how do I know if if they are my family's furniture? Um, okay. I guess we'll buy it all. Since that seems to be what we need to do. Enjoy your purchase. The yard we do. Okay. Celestia Yacht Club. Alright, large fountain. Oh, there's a tilted ship there. I'm guessing this is the guy's place, right? No, this is the yacht club. So no, this is not. This is not what we're looking for. Uh, but it is somewhere around here. We're just looking for a fountain. Large house with a fountain. He's got a gazebo. Oh, or at the end of Bonanza Road the other way. Yeah, that looks like it could be a fountain. How come I can mark it twice? All right. well, that's fine. That's fine. It's not that long of a street because a little bit of a waste of my time. Oh, wait, there was another coin here as well. Yeah, it's right there. Let's actually go for that first. Since we're in the area. Went the wrong way, we might as well make it worth the trip. Okay, this way. <sighs> um, up here? Yeah, there it is. Two locations in Grand Saray that caused a great deal of trouble over a long period of time for the local police patrols. First is situated at the spot where you are reading this note, the second at a similar structure near the crossing of Vernet and Baskerville. At midnight, a group of vandals would regularly leave obscene graffiti depicting local aristocratic families near one of the, uh, the two points. I studied these occurrences and noticed the following details. The graffiti's appearance depended upon the direction of the police patrol. Each time the police patrol set out from the police station towards the yacht club, graffiti would be waiting for them at point two. Each time the police patrol would head in the opposite direction, graffiti would appear at point one. It was obvious to me that the culprits communicated the police patrol's approach somehow. There was no direct vision between the two points, however, so they must have used an intermediary location to send another warning from one point to another. I have hidden this coin in that intermediary spot in an object that they used for communication. Okay, so that was the corner of Baskerville and what again? Um, Vernet. Baskerville and Vernet. Baskerville and Vernet. So here. No vision between the two, so they used an intermediary, and that intermediary included some way of communicating. So, while the two points aren't visible with each other, both points would have to be visible from both locations. Is it that... Is that church tower there? Okay, and once in our front yard. Okay, yes. So the Stonebrook Manor is locked behind the furniture quest. Okay. But I'm not worrying about that right now. Um, graffiti's appearance. Aristocratic families. Um... That's quite a ways. Um, 
Is it possible to get rid of this? So I can see what's going on underneath this. I don't see a way. Alright, maybe I'm overthinking this. Maybe it's literally just somewhere visible along the way. The bridge. The bridge. Right here. Totally visible. From both points. But how do I get up there? Um... See that one? How far away am I from? Oh, that's still quite a ways. Maybe it's not the bridge. Oh! Is that it? Is that a coin? It is. One of a kind made as a proposal to the British Secretary of State. This design was rejected, and all successive copper coins had a seated figure of Britannia. A British grain to replace the haber on Malta. Mother had a relative in the Maltese government who gave this unique coin as a wedding gift. Cool, okay. Then this was, uh, this was, um, glowing for, not glowing, but you know. I, I, I get that I found the coin and I can stop doing this, but I'm just still putting it together. So yes, you can see this, this is supposed to be a gas lamp. I can't tell if this is supposed to be metal or a combination of metal and glass. I can't tell if it's all gold or if it's just a, well, anyway, um. Yeah, this can definitely be seen from there. Where is the other point? I gotta go. I gotta find out. I gotta see if you can see this from the other point. I don't care if the quest is complete. I gotta. I gotta know. I gotta. I gotta follow this through. Baskerville. Oh, right here. It's literally right here. as a fountain. Kind of? Am I where I need to be? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, you can kind of see the gas lamp from here. Well, either way. Uh, mystery solved. Okay. Um... I could probably be doing some of the treasures as well. Um, or where was I going? Oh yeah, the end of that road. Um, am I better off fast traveling at this point? I most certainly am. <clears throat> um, clockwork extortion pin. This way. And I need to change my clothes because it's starting to irritate me. Should we be in Ottoman for for a bit? Or should I go back to the? Oh, let's be a cop, huh? Let's be a cab. Cops don't care about glasses. Um, Agent two two B. Oh yeah, that's popular enough. Cops don't care about age either, apparently. 
There we go. <laughs> there we go. Herring's Manor. Okay, let's see what he has in store for us. Mycroft assigned me to visit a local astronomy professor. Odd entryway. Huge and empty. <gasps> Boom, Sherry. I found a corpse. Don't you think it's strange we always end up in situations like this? Seek, and ye shall find. A little bird sang to me. Well, we should probably notify the police, but we're Sherlock Holmes, so... Uh, sword missing from the wall. And yes, it's on the floor. So he grabbed a sword to defend himself. Didn't do a great job of it. Uh, we have something highlighted there. Is that a... Is that a hat? Can't I can't tell from here. Um, notes, astral movements. Tease out. Two places are set. Pile of books on the floor. Possibly from a struggle. Painting off the wall. Possibly fell. None of that. Or I mean, he doesn't look like he's the neatest person here at the best of times. Rug is disheveled. Got rolls up in that one. That could also be from a struggle, but again, doesn't seem like a great housekeeper. Alright. I think he's faking. I don't see any blood. I think he's setting us up. I guess let's get started. Figure out what the fuck this is supposed to be. It looks like a hat. It is a hat. A damaged hat. It would not be easy to cut this hat in two. Whoever is responsible is a master of their craft. This was meant to be have been done with a sword. Okay. Pheasant feathers. They're rare here. So, one sword near the body. There's no blood. So... <laughs> Poisoned? I don't know. The painting was removed to hide a safe. I see that that's a safe now. I thought it was just another painting before. So, removed the painting, set it down, opened the safe was reluctant to hand over whatever was in the safe, so after he had done so, he drew a sword in an attempt to recover whatever was being stolen. The other person somehow got the drop on him in a way that did not cause him to lose any blood, and he died, possibly poisoned, in the tea. Can I do toxicology, please? Yes, only one person drank the tea. One person drank the tea, one did not, so one knew it was poisoned. Which means that our, I mean, assuming that it is poison, Professor was seated here, the other person wearing a pheasant feather hat was on the other side. Just poking around here, yeah, he's not a great housekeeper, it's hard to tell what is from a struggle and what is not. Clock. Clock is open. Let's start with the clock. That's an, that's odd. The clock's hands aren't moving. Hmm. Is that where he hid the key to his safe or 
Got a diary, got a pen. Medical report, medical report for fencing competition. Jacob Herring, 52. Um, perfect health to participate in the fencing competition at the London Fencing Club. Okay, so he's in good health. Completely healthy and ready to take part in the fencing competition. And he's an accomplished fencer. So, the victim is Professor Jacob Haring himself. That's no great surprise. I mean, all things considered. London Fencing Club, 1876. As they say, live by the sword, die by the sword, right? And he was an extortionist, so... Um, and that's probably what's been stolen, is the... dirt he had on people. Daily schedule. A man with a plan. Admittedly, not a great plan if you write on paper exactly when you will do your illegal business, but a plan nonetheless. All right. Morning, Constitutional Lawyer. I'm looking for tea. Um, the Serious B luncheon tea? Is that... I have no idea what time it's meant to be. All right. So the clock was not working. Repair the clock. It's the only thing marked as tea here, so whatever the serious B luncheon tea is, I'm guessing is what they're alluding to. It's a lot of correspondence. A fish with an Stamped H. with Mr. Herring's personal seal. Is that fish meant to be a herring? <laughs> uh, yes, yes, indeed. What's he peeking at? Looks like it's pointed at the rokes. Okay. I'm guessing that this carpet is not meant to be relevant because if it were... Yeah, it doesn't look like it matches up with the other evidence. So I'm guessing it's just window dressing. Ah, uh, these bloody lights everywhere. Okay, let's go in here. Nope. Okay. How about in here? Nope. Okay. Um, then I guess we're over here looking at the safe. No. Alright. A safe behind a painting. Classic. Indeed it is. This was opened carefully. One presumes that empty safes are not some hip new trend. If you had an enormous collection of blackmail material, where would you keep it? Oh, ho, ho, ho. nice try, Sherry. But I ain't telling you nothing. Okay. The body itself. Number one, sword. There's no blood Cousin on the sword. 1796 light cavalry saber. Yep, no blood on the sword, so he didn't even get a chance to really fight off his attacker. His hand is clinging to his chest, but he has no stab or gunshot wounds. Yep, poisoned. Eyes open. Judging by his expression, a painful and unexpected death. Yes. It looks like he died of natural causes, but something doesn't add up. It's the tea. Tea is poisoned. He drank out of his cup, and the other person didn't drink of theirs. I need to fucking... Okay. Medical notes. Schedule. Why can't I do more? I already know what's going on here.
What's the significance of the stopped clock? The stopped clock must have something to do with the schedule. Because you didn't know what time it was, right? Oh, I got my first advising appointment soon. Um, I got better open up Zoom just to be here. Just a sec. Okay, where was I? Um, right, um, the clock. What is the significance of the broken clock? Also, it'd be nice to know what time it currently is, but... Um, and this. Little birds. And, oh, now I can investigate it. John, do you know any songbirds? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, partridges, birds of paradise, uh, chickens. Uh, okay, I might just be hungry. Little bird sing to me. Shoving on the back. Excuse me while I trample through the crime scene. Old but still deadly. Hmm. Two sabers used to be mounted here. Yeah, I figured that out, Sherlock. <laughs> or should I, should I say, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, 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 I can do the thing. Am I ready to do the thing? Um. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I mean, I, I know what happened to him. He was poisoned. There was a scuffle. He pulled a saber and then he died. I don't understand the significance of the clock. Birds sang to me. Serious B, lunch and tea. Any of these calculations mention Serious B? And its apparent path with environment. No, this has nothing to do with Serious B. Loads of newspapers. What about over here? This explains Haley's Comet's path. This is merely the solar system. The clock's hands aren't moving. Hmm. Alright, I guess let's try it and see what we end up with. Maybe I can get most of the way there. Um, I have to do this in their order. Oh, no. That's just not one of the events. Okay. Odd. Um, okay. They're fixing the clock. Dropping his correspondence. Having tea. Shit, I don't know this one. Um, I'm guessing he was fixing the clock because it's open. So that must have been what he was attempting to do. No, I don't think it was some random person with the sword. Yes, I think it was the professor himself. The key said it was opened carefully, so yes, that just indicates that it was not yeah, forced open. Okay, gotcha. Um, no, it was not a random person. It was somebody who most likely knew he was deadly with a sword and so anticipated that in advance. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was him. Although his experience as a duelist, is that meant to convey uh, that if it was his weapon, 
he would certainly have drawn blood. Is that what I meant to believe? Yeah, no, that's definitely not what happened. Yes, that is what happened. Um, and so here... I, I mean, the note says that it was the killer that did it, so... God, this is sloppy. This is not a good theory. Um, not at all. It explains nothing about his death. Um, okay, but I, this is the closest I have to my theory. You're not even trying, Sherry. Concentrate. Okay. Um, okay, uh, the hands stopped working. So what time did they stop working? It was... So he would have been working on the science article. Work on the science article. So he has letters signed by Harrington. So then he never actually collected mail from the post office. So he didn't collect mail from the post office because he would have sent the signed letters. I'm 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 missing a piece here, and that piece has to do with the clock. The clock was already broken, or it wouldn't have been on his to-do list. So the time on the clock is completely irrelevant. It broke sometime prior to the creation of this list, which presumably was either the day before or first thing before, um, you know, when around 6 a.m. when he woke up. Maybe then he noticed that the clock was broken. So that would be, you know, 10, 10 p.m. when it occurred. It's also possible that the alignment of 10, 10 p.m. is somehow like, important to the repair of the clock. You know, perhaps those hands have to be aligned uh, in order for the gears to be in the right position to service them. I, I, uh, the time on the clock is... It seems like it's meant to be a clue, but it also seems like a contrivance, and, and, and there are other possible explanations for it. But, of course, that's the case with, with just about anything. But that's where I feel like I'm missing something here. Um, shit... Okay. This one has to be wrong. Because he wasn't meant to repair the clock until 4. And again, there's a bunch of different reasons why the hands might be at 10:10, 10, 10, but that's assuming that that's an important clue. Um that's not he wouldn't have gotten to it yet. So he wasn't repairing the clock. He would have just collected his mail from the post office. Why the letters have his signature on them, right? Yeah, so, so he... The letters are here, though. The alternative is T. <clears throat> okay. 
I'm going to answer that he was doing this simply because... The T and the repairing the clock seem like less likely answers. This doesn't seem likely either, but it seems like the most likely of those. This is almost certainly correct because the safe was not forced open. This is correct because he is skilled with the sword, uh, and it said that the hat had to have been done by a skilled person, and it's unlikely that they were able to take the sword from him after retrieving it off the wall. So these two have to be correct. This one right here. Well, did I go through all of the options, first of all? Oh. Okay. I'm just... I'm too dumb to actually look through the thing. Yeah, obviously he wasn't wearing a hat. Because his hat was on the floor. Okay, that's probably what I got wrong then. And if I get it another talking to from John here, then I'm going to say that uh, I was probably right on that one before, but let's see. Mr. Harry okay. does not want to deviate from his plans, and yet on this day he only managed to answer his mail and never did get to repair the clock. Right. The visitor knew his schedule. They entered the house between 3.30 and 4 p.m., that's exactly when Haring would be checking his blackmail collection. Okay. When Jacob saw the intruder, his fencing reflexes kicked in. He lunged left to the sabers, wrenched one off the wall, and attacked the visitor. But in the middle of the assault, Mr. Haring is struck by a heart attack, and the professor only manages to cut off the hat of the intruder. What? The visitor stole Haring's entire blackmail collection and wrote a message on the blackboard. Before we go chasing the intruder, should we try to confirm the cause of the professor's death? I'd hate for him to be a red herring. That is an extremely unlikely series of events. My explanation that they had tea and was poisoned is way more likely. There's even two teacups set out. And I can now examine them. Sherlock, that's a bad theory. Half empty, or for John, half full. A strong, rotten smell. Uncharacteristic for yeah, tea. because it's fucking poison, dipshit. Totally empty. Even John couldn't argue with that. So, yeah, they didn't just happen to come in. Little bird sang to me. And such odd... Oh, is it supposed to be a cipher? Such odd capitalization. So A L L all. Is it, are the capital letters supposed to be spelling something out? Um, what was I doing? Um, uh, yes. Yeah, he did not break in. That's so stupid. Um, yeah, this is what I want to do. Chemical analysis on the T. Three and negative three. Three. Oh, I see. We're going to have to be a little bit more clever this time, aren't we? Okay, um, so green. Negative five, two, and three. Laced with digitalis. So he was digitalis poisoned. Digitalis is usually used to cure heart disease, but every drug is a poison if you get the dosage wrong. Or right, if that's your goal. Okay. Um, so, yes, I was correct. 
from the very beginning. Which means that the theory we just went through is completely useless. Okay. Um, not sure what to do with this information, though. I have to go through everything all, all over again? Okay. No, I can't actually redo that one, which means that anything I can redo must be new information, right? The clock's hands aren't moving. Or uh, apparently not. Um, okay. Can I re-examine the body now that I have convinced Sherlock that it was poisoning? No. Okay. Old, but still deadly. Hmm. Two sabers used to be mounted here. What am I supposed to do with this information? Uh, what does the book symbol mean again? Okay. Oh, can't do anything with that. Um... Mm. Oh, the wait, the uh the the book. The the book is the research thing. We haven't done that in a long time. Or is there more uh oh, no. Yeah, that's the research thing. Okay, so who do we research? Broken or a little bird sang to me. Um, probably not City Hall. Maybe the Chronicle. Maybe this is a place, or maybe this is a phrase from an article or something or a poem no the chronicle wouldn't have that information well we've only done this at the police station so let's try that first i guess look i'm dressed like you guys aren't that cool is this familiar to you oh i don't know about that Ask one the others hmm Stark the Clark. How you doing? Oh, hello there. How are you doing, ma'am? Hmm. Alright, so we were in Grand Saray. Said somebody... Um... This is one the book. Um, so are we looking for a burglar that leaves little phrases or something on the thing? Oh, wait. Maybe we're actually supposed to be researching his hat. Red ribbon and pheasant feathers. So... Oh, property crimes? Suspects. Oh, I cannot believe that worked. Um, a woman reported a loud noise and screams in Grand Saray. When the police arrived at the place, they were instantly ambushed and shootout began. I don't know. Oh, maybe this isn't relevant. Is this something completely different? There were no casualties on the side, but most of the suspects managed to escape. The officer succeeded in arresting only two gang members, Sid uh, Parody. Harry Trelawney, both are sons of local noblemen. During the interrogation, Parody and Trelawney confessed that they are associated with the Robbins gang. Remember to engage in, okay, blackmail, that's relevant, robbery and illegal bookmaking, but have remained elusive for a long time. They tend to distinguish themselves by wearing 
bright red waistcoats and hats with red ribbons and bird vests. Okay, so this is this case. So it's the Robbins gang we're looking for. They often emblazon their crime scenes with a reference to little birds singing. <laughs> to deter would-be informants from betraying them? Well, that's really stupid. Commit crimes wearing very distinctive clothing and leaving a very distinctive signature at the crime scene. Yes, surely your primary concern is informants. After all, who would ever know you're responsible if it weren't for informants? Their leader calls himself Lucky Joe. True identity remains unknown. The detained gang members have revealed the location of their hideout. It's in Grand Saray, west from the intersection of Vernet and LeBlanc. Requesting approval to raid the hideouts. Seems like we have fun. Um... LeBlanc. Vernet. So west of Vernet and LeBlanc. So here? That seems unlikely. That's way too nice a neighborhood. West from the intersection of Vernet and LeBlanc. LeBlanc, Vernet. Okay. Neighbors, hey Sherry. We should introduce ourselves. Uh, I mean, and he joked that we were neighbors, so. Guess so. Fast travel to Stonewood Manor, and while we're there, we can check and see what getting that furniture did for us. Said something about the garden. Best place for reading. The garden's much prettier, don't you think? Yeah. I bet the memories are all flooding back now. Nah. Okay, that explains why there was a canister light just on a random orange. My mother liked the story of David and Goliath. She said, it doesn't matter how small you are, you can always overcome any obstacle. She lied. She lied to you, Sherlock. How does that feel? Looked right into your face as a child and just lied right to your face. No concern at all. Just bald-faced lies. Um... This one doesn't have a thing to say about it, okay? Hey, is anybody at home? Hello? The fuck are you doing? Um, the tale of the empty house. In. Wood fight oh, competition. Yes. We were sword fighting in this very spot. And that time, I was the winner. So, as your victory prize, you asked me to fulfill a wish. I remember we did something the very next night, John, but what was it? Iron big we bars. We a cage with us. You insisted it must be made of iron. That's because we were preparing to hunt fairies in our garden. Everyone knows iron is the only thing that can hold them. And I was distinctly uncomfortable. Mother's disguise. It was a disguise, of course. Fairies are easy to scare off, unless you're incognito. And every trap needs bait. Tasty liquid sweet. We brought honey and a glass of warm milk. After two hours lying in wait, we noticed movement in the bushes. The fairies appeared at last. Animal pink grunting. No, it was just Isolde the pig. 
She was lured by the smell of honey and milk and ate every last drop. Isolde belonged to Mr. Sim in Miner's End and escaped regularly. At least twice a month we would see him searching for her all over the island. One marvelous evening, I defeated Sherry in a sword fight, a rare accomplishment as my prize. I made him join me on a fairy haunt. Sherlock did not share my enthusiasm. He pretends to not believe in fairies, but I knew exactly what to do. Um, Mr. Sim in Miner's End, but she would always get free. At least twice a month, we'd see him wandering around. Turn up Okay, this is exactly what he just said. So... Can I go into one of the doors? Like this one? Another one. There must be something important. Okay. I, I can feel it. The fuck was the point of this? Another one. There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. Uh. Another one. There must be something important. If doing it, that didn't open up a door, then what is one. the point of doing there it? There must be something important behind it. I can feel it. One of the first things I saw when entering this house as a child. It's like deja vu. Mycroft's umbrella. The only outgoing thing in his wardrobe. Another memory incoming, Sherry. Strange. I struggle to recall anything about the day we moved in. The only detail I'm sure of is that it was raining early that morning. Nothing? Is that what? I, I like the umbrella holder. I mean, that's really cool. Um, what? And what is this? Oh, it's the fixture. Pinning. The pinning. Ah. Our mother brought a slew of belongings with her. She refused to leave a single thing in London. Mycroft had to spend the whole day dealing with it. There was always a hat on our stand, but I'm sure it did not belong to Mycroft. This trip was a challenge for our mother. I tried to help her. Do you feel it? Is it the air shimmering, or is it my imagination? Well, since air does not shimmer, I would say it's your imagination. Okay. Not sure exactly what we're doing or what story I'm trying to reconstruct here. Um, is that Mycroft dealing with this stuff? Oh, that doesn't look like Mycroft. That looks like an older gentleman. So, that would be Mycroft. Uh, no. Yeah, whoever that is. Or... Yeah, he said it's not Mycroft's. Okay, so... Whoever that is, then... And Sherlock said he tried to help her, so 
Yeah, I don't know who that is. Right. So Sherlock said he tried to help his mother, said Mycroft was dealing with this, and we don't know who this guy is. Your neighbors will be told that Mrs. Holmes is suffering from tuberculosis. It is common to move closer to the sea in such cases. Thank you, Dr. Richter. No, Sherlock, step away from her. Upstairs, go to your room. Lean on me, mother. Take your time. Actually, I never heard her coughing. I remember now. So she did not have the consumption. We arrived in the early morning of a rainy day. Sherry's mother was weak, unsteady, tried to help her. Mycroft was very serious while dealing with the luggage. When he saw Sherlock trying to help her mother upstairs, commanded him to go upstairs to his room. Uh, Otto Richter said that the neighbors would believe that Violet has tuberculosis. Sherry just realized that he had never heard her coughing. Okay, so it was a cover story. And now we can get up oh, into that upper room. I feel dizzy. It's stuffy in here, isn't it? John, are you all right? I'll be okay in a minute. <clears throat> How about we uh, find our room in the meantime? Okay. Cool. Look at this. It's like traveling ten years into the past with a single step. Oddly satisfying. VR. Need to repeat this one day, but with bullets. One of John's first pictures. I think this was supposed to be Mycroft. He really has improved his skills since then. This brings back memories. We used this old diary to keep track of our adventures. I think it was my father's. John, do you think we can visit some of the places mentioned in the diary for old time's sake? Why not? Nothing like a stroll down memory lane. Note down the places you'd like to visit, and I'll add what I remember of them. I'll never forget how challenging it was to obtain this simple sketch. Oh, that's the sketch I did earlier, huh? Why would it be here? Okay. Oh, these must be the notes of my earliest observations. We wanted to locate a particular dog we'd spotted, and we met it, didn't we? Okay. Oh, oh it reminds me of our neighbor. He had the same balloon in his yard, only bigger. Do you remember? Yes. We visited him several times while living here. Okay, I'll get to the mine palace in a second. Let's first... Take a look. Coal dust from Miner's End, sandy dirt from the old city. We scoured the island top to bottom for these soil samples. Hmm. Cool. Maybe it'll come in handy the later. The first chemical laboratory I ever made. I almost miss its elegant simplicity. Look at this, John. Remember how desperately I wanted to learn the violin? I never had a proper opportunity. Such a shame. I always hated the rule about being silent in this place. Robinson Caruso. The only fiction book on my table. I can still hear my mother reading it to me. So many pleasant evenings were spent here with the Encyclopedia Americana. Is there a copyright issue with Encyclopedia Britannica? Interesting. What's that over there? A key shaped like a doorknob. Cross key. This doorknob has a cross shaped end. Too intricate to be merely a handle. You know what? That definitely looks like a key. Let's poke around and see if we can find any secrets. A magnificent tool made for a spurious purpose, staring into the sky. I've definitely found a better use for it. Why you is... mean, for spying on people? Yeah. <laughs> My thoughts exactly, John. <laughs> Wooden horse. I cannot believe all my toys are still here. Hey, they were not just yours, they were half mine too. 
an artifact from Palau carved out of bone and claimed to be 300 years old. My mother proved it was a fake. My very favorite plaything. It was the perfect pirate treasure. This time I was first to pick beds. This one's mine now. Okay, um, what's the pin thing? Oh, hidden item in our room, okay. Hidden item A under the bed. John's diary memories. Oh, when pigs fly. Nope. hidden treasure somewhere. Okay. Somewhere in the room. Is it related to the... Is it related to the handle? I mean, that looked like a doorknob to me. Um... Oh, it is pinned. Okay. Is it behind the wardrobe? No. Is it this one weird thing that's... Need to repeat this one day, but with bullets. Oh, here we go. I see it. I see it. It's right there. It's missing a... Missing a handle. How do I... Do I have to pin the right evidence? Yes, I do. Fuck you. Perfect match. My small archive of crime clippings. Maybe I should pick up this habit again. And a pep. Still has a faint odor of tobacco, one of the few things on this island that smell like home. Made of cherry wood, father's favorite. A small, straight smoking pipe made of cherry wood that belonged to Sherry's late father's secret homes. We had to hide it from Violet as she didn't know we stole it from his cabinet in London. The wood is old, its surface is worn from frequent use, but it has been well maintained. A faint scent of tobacco lingers. Sherlock has taken his father's pipe with him, a sense, uh, a sense it carries considerable sentimental value. Okay. I knew you'd find it in no time. Oh, okay. Um, then Mind Palace, I suppose... No, oh, these are all the... Okay, that's another... Boy, sorry. Okay. We had a neighbor on the island who was friends with my family, imaginary friend John, missing records, no tuberculosis, mother died of tuberculosis. That is odd. Okay, that's our first connection there. Oops. Near the Greek bridge, neighboring houses. He had a gas balloon in the yard, okay. 
We'll come back to that. Uh, right now we are uh, on our way to kick some ass over here. Wasn't that neighbor missing a finger? That does sound vaguely familiar. Wasn't his name uh, Theodore? Theodore Gilden, perhaps? Theodore Gilden. It's the perfect time to investigate. No, we're on. We're gonna go take on this Robin's gang. Ah, which is this way and this way. Oh, let's uh, stop and pick up that treasure that we noticed. There's a the treasure hunt. We we noticed that it was most likely this place. Oh, there it is. We found the treasure. You and I make a good team. Fuck you, John. I did all the work. Make a good team, my ass. You're holding me back. Well, this is the place. Gates open. Yeah, Robin's Lair. Do I go in? I do not go in. So, what am I supposed to do now? If I don't go in, what am I supposed to do? Back. Oh, there we go. He doesn't have an invitation to the club. Get him, boys. Oh, shit, here we go. Another one of these. I'm even wearing a police uniform this time. I guess I probably shouldn't just murder people. No more crime for you until next month. Don't bother moving. You've lost. Oh, shit. Oh. Can I, I thought ah, we were fuck. against murder. Shot the mask off and then I shot him in the face anyway. Ready. No more crime for give him the pepper snuff. <laughs> Don't cry, you'll live. The snuff's ready. I am invincible. <sighs> it's all yours now. Go f overcome him. Don't rush him. Ah, you bastard. I couldn't miss the party. Hello it won't work this way. Why not? He wasn't even looking at me. I'm coming for you. And why can't I shoot the gun out of his hands? Oh, there we go. Please tell me he was the last Take one. I don't enjoy friend. the combat in this game. Hey, you could have kept him alive. Okay. Or I can just shoot him. Don't cry, you'll live. Give him the pepper snuff. 
Oh shit. to knock this guy out. <laughs> Take a rest, my The snuff's ready. The combat in this game is thoroughly unpleasant. It's... All right, fella. I give up. Take <clears throat> I think I got the achievement for killing a bunch of people. You have nothing on me anyway. So I'll walk out the station right after you do. All right, so yeah, the combat in this game is thoroughly unpleasant. It's sluggish. It's um, yeah, it's something else. Um, it's just it, it's not made for for that kind of stuff. It's like it reminds me a lot of um, it's like the the movement in the combat is a lot like Red Dead Redemption Two except the character isn't as snappy so it's like it's like the combat in, in rdr2 except if there was a very like low response rate in the aiming and the movement and so on which if you've played rdr2 you know that the combat is not the strength in that game either so it's like a worse version of that excellent job catching this crook sir his name is lucky jewel and as it happens, someone with influence was after him too. You did them a favor. I just solved the mystery, officer. If a criminal appears in my path, it merely affirms my deductions are sound. Either way, you'll be pleased to know that an anonymous tip has fingered Lucky Joe as being involved in the murder of a famous professor. We have photographs and witness statements. Not so Lucky Joe is headed straight to the gallows. Someone served him to us on a silver platter. Interesting. Well... As a vital ally in the arrest of a wanted murderer, you couldn't possibly object to me interviewing him. Well, vital, y yes, I, no, of, of course, uh, go ahead. Okay. I don't think this is the guy who did the murder. Hmm. Nice, okay. You, haven't you made my day bad enough? Get out! Maybe I should have changed clothes before this. The police received an anonymous tip. Someone saw you entering Professor Jacob Haring's house. They have photos. You're in trouble. <laughs> I didn't even touch the old fool. This old business was a setup from the beginning. You broke into the house at the exact time Jacob Haring had his safe open and his collection of blackmail materials out. Perfect timing and then to steal the lot. Stop to have fucking tea with him? Oh, that's circumstantial at best. Alas, the professor turned out to be less feeble than you expected. He pulled a saber from the wall and nearly took your head off. But lo, the vigor evaporated, and all at once he fell to the floor, grasping his chest as if his heart itself had given up. That's that's exactly what happened. And that's why I'll be out of this reeking cell by morning. Once the coroner has done his business. Mm, unlikely. You claim somebody set you up. If so, they will ensure that you're hanged. We both want to know who is truly behind this, so tell me the whole story. It may yet save your life. Oh, blast. All right. What do you want to know? <sighs> I guess let's start with where the documents so are. So you broke into Professor Haring's study and stole the blackmail materials. What did you do with them? Do you like jokes? My humor tends toward the dry and bitter. Then you will love this one. As I fled Haring's place with the documents, a pickpocket snatched the folder from me on the street. I was played from the beginning, beaten at my own game. They made a joke of me and the Robins, and now I await the gallows. Ha! Ha ha ha! Oh, you're right, it was a good joke. But now things begin to make sense. So somebody really set you up here. <laughs> but why? 
there were two teacups. They were both poured and only one had been finished. Herring was not alone. There was somebody else there. This is, this is not making sense. Herring's blackmail collection was hardly public knowledge. It stands to reason that whoever informed you of his existence must be who set you up. He was yes, with somebody obviously. he trusted enough but to I've open the safe face. in front of. Nor do I know his name. I received a note at El Palazzo de Luso that gave me the address of Jacob Herring. It was signed with one letter, M. I cannot believe such an established gang leader would personally engage in burglary simply because he received a letter. It was not just a letter. I received something else with the note. A file. On me. And a bloody detailed one at that. I'm not sure if it was from Haring's own collection, but it contained things that could bury me and the entire damn Robins. I burned the file in a heartbeat, but the note warned of others like it in Haring's safe. I needed to retrieve them and got lucky. Lucky? Why? The note said that by being there at a very precise time, I'd find that safe opened. And it was right. <sighs> he wasn't alone. Fear not, Joe. I will prove you didn't kill Professor Haring. What? Then you better do it fast. I mean, I don't believe that it was Professor Lucky Harry Joe that was there, but somebody the else was there. The tea in Haring's teapot was dosed with digitalis. A large dose of such a drug, coupled with physical exertion, can cause cardiac arrest. So, if the old man hadn't attacked me... He may have lived, yes. But it wasn't you who killed him. The real murderer is the one that poisoned the professor and set you up. I'll make sure the police know it. Yeah, you may save my bacon. Oh, I wouldn't sing a victory song just yet. I believe they're preparing for a conversation with you on many subjects, like the Robins. Ha! <laughs> I can handle those fools. I thought you were the copper's pet. But you have character those bloodthirsty mongrels lack. I respect that. Make no mistake, Joe, we are not friends. Should we meet again under different circumstances? Well, you know my character. Okay. Yeah, I don't believe that Lucky Joe was there for the meeting. I mean, I did. That is what makes the most sense. But, alright, now with Joe's testimony, alright, I, I understand. Somebody led him there at a specific time. But Herring was not alone. He was with somebody else. And it was somebody he trusted enough to open that safe in front of. The teacup was there and it was poured. They were having tea. Or had just had tea. And then they left. Okay, that's possible. Yes, okay. That's possible. That makes sense to a certain extent. But still, somebody else was there shortly before the robbery. Are we to presume that that's meant to be Moriarty? What's this? Nothing. Okay, what's this? And this is the entrance to the... And what else we got back here? Oh, we can go in all of these. Is there anything like... Do you have any secrets? Secret secrets. No, okay. I'm just gonna assume that's it. Okay. Archive inspect orders. Can I go in here? Yes, I can. Treasure Island. Okay. Well, that's where I wanted to go before, but I was locked out, so... So I suppose next time we'll try and get back into the uh, the hotel again, but um, that is definitely enough for today because I've been playing for two hours and my uh, last advising session for the day is about to come in and, and I've got other work that I have to attend to. So um, I guess the, uh, the game is afoot. We'll continue on next time. You take care. Good day.